Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the date function extract. I'll be using this function on the timestamp, the time, and the interval data types. Let us look at the date function extract. It pretty much goes like this, extract field from some kind of source. Now extract works on the timestamp, time, interval, and date and date is casted to timestamp. So pretty much these three. So notice here on line five, my first example, I say extract day from timestamp. So month, day, year, so we should get out 16. Now notice I have this as D0. This is called an alias. Now you don't need that. For instance, I can just say the first part of this and execute. But notice it comes up with no header. It just says date part. Now if I say D0 or something more meaningful, you know, then I get a, a nice column level. And this is whenever we write functions or store procedures, always use an alias. Don't return some cryptic column name. Now as you know, as is optional. You don't have to say as. So you can just highlight that, execute, and notice that we're getting 16 out of the day. Now notice these are all of my, ready for it? These are all my field types. So notice we have century, decade, year, month, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond, day of week, the ISO day of week, and the day of the year. There's a couple more in there, but pretty much these are the ones I use all the time. So, of course, go to documentation, but what I'm really going to try to teach you now are these three data types. Notice here, I'm using the timestamp, and I just put a time in there. In a moment, we're going to actually go up against a real database table and do the same command. Then notice on my next one, I'm saying date. Now, this date gets casted into a timestamp, and notice I'm saying, give me the day from this as well. So let's go ahead and turn this into 17 and highlight this one. And guess what we're going to get? Our column header is going to be D1 and it's going to give us 17. There you have it. Now the next one, I'm saying give me the hour from time. And uh, so what's that going to give me? So the hour here is 19, 7 o'clock. And we're going to call that T1. Remember, the as is optional. And what did we get here? We got 19. Then I'm going to say, give me the hour from, look at this. This is the full controlly. You know, month, day, year, hour, minute, second. I just want the hour. So that should also give me 19. And our last example on this right here, I want the minute from here. And this should give us, you guessed it, 46. Now, let's look at this next one. It's called the interval data type. It's very, very powerful. So, hopefully you know now. Now is now, right? Now, this next statement I'm saying, go ahead and give me now. Now is like, it's 825 at night here. And I'm saying, hey, subtract the interval three hours and 15 minutes from now. Isn't that pretty cool? So, let's execute this right here. Execute. Now notice the current time is 8.26. I'm saying subtract 3 hours and 15 minutes. So 20 minus 3 is 17, 15 minutes. 26 minus 15 is 11. Isn't that sweet? Now of course I can say add. You can say plus here. And I can say, uh, let's do this. Ready? Well, we need to do it in this one so you can see that plus. So I'm going to plus 15. And notice I'm only going to get out the minute. And notice I'm going to increment the minute by 15. So if the current time is, you know, around 26, 26 plus 15, let's put that at 41. Go 41. There you go. So this next one, kaboom, are you ready for it? Now you tell me why this is going to mess up. Well, of course, it's obvious. 
I'm looking at the time, but I'm trying to take out a field that's not valid of time. Time only works with hour, minute, second, millisecond. I'm trying to take out a date type. So here we're going to get a, ready for it? Kaboom, right? That's not recognized. You know better than that. Okay, so once again, these are all our, what are they called? Fields. And this is my source. Let's actually do a real table now. I just downloaded the table database from Progress SQL called DVD Rentals. And they have a table in here called Categories. So I can say select star from Categories, Category. And let's hit the go button. And then notice here that I have a date. So we could easily come over here and just use that um, function we just learned. And how would we do that? Well, if I just want to go get last date, last update, and notice all of these values are the same. Uh, let me pull this up here so you can see that. I'm only going to get one row. Notice they're all the same. So I don't need to repeat, you know, like a you know, bunch of lines that have the same. So I'm going to say where category ID equals one. So we're just going to get one row. And then we can do this expand test. So, I mean, extract. So let us take this one right here. So I'm going to extract the day from that. So how would I do that? Now this is on a real table, real column. So I would say extract day from last update, you know, like as D1. Let's see what happens. So this is going to get the day from that. And notice when we look at that, it's got Year, month, day, hour, minute, second. Here I'm saying just get out the day. And it's just the 15th, right? Let's also print a last update so we can see that. So notice the day of 15, the day is 15 here. And I guess just for kicks, we'll do, uh, how about we do decade? Decade. So what do we say? Decade, extract decade from last update. And there you go. So these are all the, what are they called? Fields. And the source is either a column from a table or you can roll with your own. And there you have it.